last weekend. Uh, the Nordic resistance movement had a demonstration in the Finnish, sit- Finnish city of Tampere, not Finnish city. Um, it's a this like far right um, nationalist organization. The Finnish police has uh, suggested that their uh, like movement should be shut down or like uh, prohibited for basically for thought crimes, I think. I'm not like a I am not a supporter of the movement or anything like that but like based on this demonstration like the speeches that people gave it doesn't sound so bad like the most of their messages seem quite reasonable and I'm gonna like translate the basic message because they of course were speaking Finnish so I don't expect my viewers to understand at least not all of them so and uh, I must uh, I guess I should point out I heard about this whole event from another Minds user confused Finlander so uh, thanks to him I didn't even know this was going on so anyway I I watched this already like live when it happened but I'm lazy and I was busy with other stuff so I'm making this video now and yeah this Nordic resistance movement their uh, logo is this green flag with this arrow i think it looks sort of lame but whatever it's also active in sweden and probably in other nordic countries too and it has been it has existed for a few years now at least Uh, i don't know great deal about it but yeah this is like the i guess this is the first thing uh, first time actually like hear them speak or something and it sounds fairly reasonable like their overall message I might not agree with everything they say, but certainly I um, I like support the freedom of speech and all that stuff, especially since they are, you know, giving reasonable advice or suggestions. So okay, there were like three speakers. The first one I don't remember the name, so I'm not gonna I don't know bother with that. But yeah, the first guy said it was more generic. Like he said something like. You know, in Finland, uh, if you f- wave the ISIS flag, although he didn't say it explicitly, but like if you use that, you can um, practice like armed training and uh, commit war crimes and it's fined by the police and stuff, especially if you're in Sweden, I believe. But like if you are part of some right wing organization, then the government is up in your ass. He mentioned that this is like a he mentioned a genocide of Finns, so basically the Finnish version of white genocide. So clearly they they have common talking points with American uh, so-called far right, and uh, and then he said something about freedom of speech. So he was saying about uh, freedom of speech when you like ban one movement, then the door is open to banning other movements. And it basically promotes self censorship. And uh, you know, all legal organizations they will have to think what can you say and what you can't say. And this sort of reminds me of the situation in China, like the the people because the government cannot like uh, censor or like uh, watch everything that all of the Chinese people say because there's so fucking many. So they instead like promote this atmosphere atmosphere of fear and you know you never know like when the government is gonna crack down on you if you do something wrong if you engage in wrong speech or something and the guy also says something that the you know the elite is directing conversation to a direction more suitable for them by this uh banning of this stuff and also like uh like i think they pointed out uh that they pointed out that the, this Nordic resistance movement, even though like the police is considering banning the ho- whole organization, they haven't been like actually investigated or like properly accused of being a criminal organization. At least according to the movement itself, it is only they are being banned basically for uh, thought crimes. I don't know, like, I, I support freedom of speech, especially, like, when you're, you know, not advocating anything 
any violence or anything illegal and stuff so i think it's fairly ridiculous they're even like considering banning this organization because i'd like to see people like this like well actually i wouldn't like to see like but it would be good to see these people on tv like uh, you know having actual honest debates between the far right and the far left but of course we live in this you know communist lefty totalitarian system uh so that is not allowed at least not according to my opinion i don't watch much tv so but when i do like it it's so much so full of like this disgusting lefty propaganda it triggers me so i don't wanna watch tv okay then the the next guy guy in black i i must say that i don't like their fashion sense like of course they seem to have like these jackets that represent their movement and stuff but i don't know still i at least because they were they the antifa was of course protesting this protest um elsewhere and throwing smoke bombs and stuff like that and causing problems um so anyway but like maybe the good thing that maybe antifa is more colorful like i don't dislike black i like black clothes myself but still i don't know it's too monotonous okay that's that was a side note okay the next guy he i guess will be the finnish martin luther king because he said he has a dream and then he highlighted his dream and i think i think his speech is the best one like because i don't think you can really disagree what with what we he what he is saying unless you are some you know far left communist glo or some globalist like you know if you're just a regular person with you know uh who can engage in rational thought and uh you know have decent morality H how can you disagree with what he's saying so okay i'm gonna highlight the points so he has this dream that the uh, politics in finland would be in the interest of Finns and not the globalist elite and that the economy would be given back to the Finns instead of the you know globalists and that Finns would be responsible or Finland would be responsible for its own money and creation of money this sounds a bit like I don't know JFK or abraham lincoln allegedly they both were killed for um wanting americans to have their own money and even like gaddafi in libya that's allegedly one reason why uh, obama started this democracy uh, war there and stuff okay let's move on and then the, the guy said that part of his dream is the is to increase the uh, birth rate of Finnish children and he hopes that the Finnish people have a future and he wants the uh, politics to uh, to be in the interest of Finnish children and uh, he also wants uh, mothers to be able to spend time with children and that women could concentrate on taking care of children instead of having to worry about their financial situation like okay i can i had i agree with this but i can understand that you know even though you're not like some you know far left feminist or something that this might sound a bit too like a conservative and patriarchal to you but i don't think so and of course like uh he doesn't li clarify what he actually means by this this is just his dream but certainly i think this is something that should be discussed because like you know somebody might interpret it and maybe he even means it that you know basically we went just stay at home take care of home and children and don't work at all and uh well and uh, well i'm not i'm not against women working but i certainly I'd like to see a society myself where women have the option of staying at home and taking care of children, but if they want, and you know they have the pers personal, you know personally have the skills to pursue a career in whatever, then they should be able to do it. Um, and then he also 
this guy also said that um, the value of work or labor should be returned and uh, that the working man wouldn't be robbed by taxation and other things and also that the, the working man would derive pleasure from his work and the building of future so basically you know so that they wouldn't be wouldn't be exploited and which is something i agree and i'd also like to see some improvement there are lots of unemployed people in finland and uh well bringing loads of refugees isn't gonna help the situation at all so i'd also like to see the i don't know somehow encourage people to work or like just somehow increase the availability of reasonable jobs but that's not what he said that's just my <laughs> own dream i guess and uh and the guy also said that the rights of the worker should be one of the priorities of the state and he he wants he thinks that the working man should have um should be able to afford to buy his own property and stuff like that and he's against uh interest slavery or debt slavery yes definitely me too and he he doesn't want to see the people exploited in in the pursuit of quick uh, financial gain so yeah he's uh, against capitalism which i am too uh, and he also wants to uh, wants animals to be able to live in nat their natural conditions and that the, uh, that nature would be taken care of and like you know not pollute the forests and the lakes and whatnot and he wants to ban murdering of animals in the pursuit of pleasure or convenience or uh, superficial superficiality that sort of well vague like certainly i'm for basic um i don't know right rights is to i don't know is like even like human rights or animal rights it's like one of these words hijacked too much by the left so it can mean pretty much anything but like but yeah so i basically it sounds decent but still it's sort of va vague what he actually means by it but anyway he wants to see the finnish people as a unified people he wants Finns to be able to have the freedom of speech and this is interesting he says that national socialists also should have the right to bring forward their views which i agree with i'm not a national socialist but neither am i triggered by the mere fact that somebody else is a national socialist um but yeah this is i guess the most i don't know blatant point that i can see that many people are just disagree with because like we have been basically conditioned to think that national socialists are the worst thing ever but i think that communists are the worst things ever and at least on some level national socialists seem to be against that so i'm like you know i guess this has like a creates a slightly um optimistic view of national socialism for me or something but still i'm not convinced it's necessarily like the best system of the correct system for you know for a country to have or anything like that okay and the guy says that uh the citizens should have the right to decide their own important matters and well which is of course they should have but it's also sort of vague and he wants the political system to be transparent and no like secret lobbyists who you know influence politicians behind the doors and he wants the political corruption to be um to be um taken into like uh taken into matters or something and also like the the corrupt politicians to be punished which is certainly i'd like to see 
And I, I think that even, you know, lefties, because nobody likes our current prime minister, like, okay, probably somebody does, but pretty much like whenever I hear people talk about him, uh, they always complain what a horrible asshole he is. But I, I would say the same for every prime minister we've had in like 20 years or something, or at least 15 years. So, so I, I don't know. I think it's pointless to complain about like the prime minister because it's the system that create like you know brings just another asshole to the surface, and it's of course controlled by the globalists and EU and all that. So because we don't have any real independence here. So yeah, I definitely agree with this that the corruption in the political system should be looked into and head should roll figuratively or literally i don't really much care um and yeah like uh, it's one of these fun myths that i at least used to hear that you know there is very little corruption in finland but i think it's more like a joke because it's just not as blatant as in like greece or italy or something but we have corrupt politicians and all that stuff and okay the guy also wants the the people in the background in politics to be put into you know daylight like uh, the people who influence the politicians so instead because usually like you know on the tv you only see the politicians they made this or that decisions and so forth and so on so yeah this this is something i very much disagree uh, i mean agree with as well and he doesn't want to see the genocide of Finns, and he his dream ha says that uh, that the Finnish people would be alive hundreds and thousands of years from now. And he says that the globalist elite hates this dream and the police uh, want to ban this dream. Okay, so that's basically his speech. And I think I agree with everything he said pretty much. Like... Of course, like I said, some things are a bit vague what they mean, but basically it sounds quite good to me. And uh, and I don't see how anybody can object to any of this really, unless you are like a complete scumbag or something. Except of course, like well, he just said he said that national socialists should have the right to speak, which once again I think everybody should agree with. But of course. I can understand if some people are against national socialism, like strongly against. I'm not for or against it. I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm gonna discuss it a bit later. But uh, first, I'll go go to the third guy who had his uh, own speech. Um, so he was also against the globalist system, and he said that millions of Finns still believe that the political elite um, is acting in benefit of the people and the children uh, which of course they are not but still yeah a lot of people seem to believe they are and one interesting thing he he mentioned the Jewish Karl Marx when he was mentioning communism and also I think he said something like Jewish Mark Zuckerberg who owns Facebook so he sort of Sadly, like he's not saying it's the Jews, uh, but he's uh, hinting that there are these, you know, Jewish people who are behind the globalist system, which I agree at least to a certain certain extent. Like I don't think that the globalist system is uh, exclusively run by Jews, but certainly Jews have a hand, hand, have their hand in it. Uh, certain Jews, not all Jews. And he, he also points out that the globalist system uh, controls people by their base instinct or like simple desires and it provides a lot of circuses, you know, bread and circuses to distract you and stuff. And basically you only have to, you know, accept these simple pleasures and not be against the system so you're a good citizen and stuff. Sounds very Orwellian, which, well, certainly it is. And he mentions how the system enslaves and subjugates people and how the uh, property or like the wealth is um, t 
distributed to the multinational corporations and he's against it. The globalist system also um, encourages materi materialistic consumption or consumerism. But he points out that the globalist system is is not like invincible. Like uh, the the fact that they want to ban Nordic resistance mu movement is uh, one example of that, which yeah I I agree with. At least I uh, I hope like by itself, I don't think that the globalist system is invincible. Or like it cannot, or that it cannot be de defeated. It's just I don't know how much actual faith I have in humanity and in their like ability and desire to really rid themselves of it. But okay, enough black pills. <laughs> so okay, I'm gonna discuss a bit about land or the resistance movement and uh, like national socialism now. Like I I remember seeing like some banner picture a few years ago of nordic resistance movement and they had like a picture of hitler on it and uh well it doesn't trigger me i i do find some positive qualities when it comes to hitler and the things he did but i'm not like uh, one of those people who thinks he's like some mystical savior either he was some guy and maybe he had good intentions maybe he didn't but if he had good intentions he still failed which we should not forget but like as a political move, it's one thing to like, you know, promote this race or nation based right wing ideologies. And, and it's another to like, you know, show Hitler, use Hitler as some sort of symbol for your movement or something like, I don't know, maybe it's just going to drive people away, away. I find it a bit questionable, but just from like a very practical standpoint, like basically like, okay, if they... Like certainly, if you contrast it with uh, commies who worship Marx or Lenin or whoever, like yeah, I think Hitler is nothing compared to those uh, commie monsters. But still, the average person is so indoctrinated by the leftist media. So maybe like a, you know, pre uh, one using. Hitler to represent your organization might not be still a good good move. Okay, and uh, of course there's one question that uh, sort of is important for me is like who actually like who controls this movement? Like is there uh, is there like some central leader? Uh, like where is this leader or like is it because the same symbol of this, uh, you know, arrow on the green background, this ugly symbol, is it's um, like you know, in in many Nordic countries and and stuff. So who controls it? Like, is there some you know right wing George Soros controlling it? Like, it might be another like a controlled opposition. I'm not. I don't know. I'm just wondering. So I certainly w wouldn't like, you know, just just because I agree with most of the, most of the things they say i wouldn't just you know jump on the bandwagon just like that they might have some sort of ulterior motives and of course like uh you know like the the second guy who had the speech about his dream i agree with his dream but like of course you'd have he'd had to point out or any politician with similar ideas let's say they'd have to point out in more practical ways how they plan to enact that dream and so forth and but for people who just think like oh it's national socialist and this movement is too tr radical even though they might be against like the uh, lefty globalism capitalism stuff so i would just say like form your own like less radical movement like hey maybe i should do that but well no i don't have any <laughs> power like that but but yeah, it's like uh, I do like to see this discussion uh, in society, and I wanna encourage it and so forth. Um, so yeah, okay, let's move on. Uh, yeah, okay, I'm gonna point out one small thing there, like Ule, which is like the Finnish BBC, basically, which is almost as bad as BBC, but maybe a bit 
bit more objective but anyway he uh, they call Nordic resistance organization which is Suomen Vastarintaliike in Finnish this is just Finnish resistance movement um, they call them neo-nazis us nazi uh, yeah so like okay I guess technically, since they call themselves National Socialists and Nazi is like the short form for you know, National Socialist, I suppose that's like, you know, technically you can y- use that, but still it sounds like it's more like negative labeling. Like, why not just call them uh, National Socialists? Like, why do they have to call them Neo-Nazis? Like, uh, I, I don't... I don't see this as like an uh, really. I, I just question the motives of Ule for using this word for them. Okay, and then I'm gonna like talk a bit about history of national socialism and Ger- nas- German national socialism, because we have this. We are given this image how they are just evil and they wanted to kill all the Jews and conquer the world and so forth. But there was this Havara Agreement in 9th, August 1933. It was signed between Jews and the Nazi Germans. And the plan was to send Jews from Germany to Palestine by peaceful means. It was like a basically consensual, like oh, maybe, okay, maybe it wasn't completely consensual. Maybe there might have been some pressure. But it wasn't like, you know, they just had. They just wanted to kill the Jews or anything like, especially not 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 back in 1933. And there was even this coin. One side has the swastika, the side has the Star of David and some Palestine, whatever. So this is like one of these historical facts that normal people don't tend to know about. And uh, yeah, and this is also interesting because. Um, I read recently somewhere on the internet, like some guy said that he had a discussion with a World War II veteran or something, and uh, and he asked the veteran, the other guy, like why did Germany has to like I think they were American and why did Germany have to be destroyed in World War II and what was the war about? And the veteran said, well, it was about the independence of Poland and uh, because you know. Hitler invaded Germany because Danzig was former German territory and all that, and then Britain and France declared war. But then he asked the guy, okay, was Poland independent after the war? And it wasn't because it became part of the uh, Soviet Union, of course. So, okay, so it was basically the, the whole war was to, like, make communism strong, in my opinion. And yeah, it's just this, I don't know, whatever this website is, but I saw this and it's sort of funny. Uh, It said that Germany's Nazi military machine was clearly intent on empire building again. And well, I just, okay, before that I point out this, like in, in March 1933, Judea declared war on Germany. I pointed it out in my previous video, some of them, one of them. And this was before the Havara Agreement, so it was the Jews that declared, certain Jews, not all Jews, certain Jewish faction, you would say, that declared war on Germany and boycotted them. But then uh, but then they signed this peaceful Havara Agreement, at least. I'm not like uh, the ex- foremost expert in all of the details of this agreement, so maybe I'm misunderstanding something. So if I'm wrong, please point it out in the comments. But anyway... Uh, I want to just show this clip about German imperialism. This this is from Black Adder, the British comedy show, and this is from this. It, this is talking about World War One, but still, like it, I think, it still applies to World War Two. Do you mean how did the war start? <laughs> yeah. The war started because of the vile Hun and his villainous empire building. George, the British Empire at present covers a quarter of the globe, while the German Empire consists of a small sausage factory in Tanganyika. (laughs) I hardly think that we can be entirely absolved from blame on the imperialistic front. 